One of the most critical things you absolutely have to do when you're buying a house is you need to shop around your mortgage. Let me tell you a story. I currently have someone who's an absolute rocket mortgage diehard. They loved this company. They loved the experience and there was nothing I can do to convince them to even consider a second opinion. However, after really pushing and prying, they got it. And let's just say they're gonna save a lot of money. So in today's video, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step guide where I'm gonna show you the actual quote from Rocket Mortgage. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for, what I'm dissecting, and then I'm gonna compare it to the new quote and see how much better it is just to simply shop it around. And at the end, I'm gonna give you guys just a really easy step-by-step -step breakdown of what you need to do to shop around and do it accurately. It's not as easy as just calling every lender on the phone book. You wanna have an actual strategy, just like I gave my client that say, them thousands of dollars so let's get to it so first and foremost let's start off with the rocket mortgage quote so this is a loan estimate you should be seeing this probably when you get your pre-qualification but if not uh, you're going to be seeing this once you're under contract in this specific situation uh, my client is actually already under contract and we got an official loan estimate because as you're going to see there's a lot of numbers here and it gets really complicated but let's just go over what they initially were getting offered that they were really happy about the loan amount was 410,000 so the sales price was 425 so basically they were putting about 15k down the interest rate was about 5.625 which is a little better than market rate right now if you just do a simple online search we can see that the interest rate is about 6.4%. So clearly they were buying down some points. So which we'll show you in a little bit. Their monthly payment was about $2,400. But once they added the insurance and the escrow, uh, they, they were about $2,733. Now there's a point being said here that they have all the information, um, but there's still a lot of things being like quoted. Like there's still a lot of things like that are still kind of being guessed at, which is a little a lack of attention to detail. But anyways, We'll continue. We are doing an FHA loan, as you can see here. Here's a really important one that you need to look at. When you're shopping around, like when you're not under contract yet, I don't want you to worry about this too much yet, okay? Because yes, it's important once you're under contract, but this is just gonna be an estimate when you're first getting an idea of what they offer. So the really the ones that you all wanna focus on are these ones right here, because this is what you really can shop around. So you wanna focus heavily on the services you can shop for, because this is where we're gonna find all of the fees that they're charging. Um, now here we can see Rocket Mortgage is charging a $700 appraisal fee, $200 credit report fee, a bunch of just junk fees, honestly, nothing really important here. And of course the upfront mortgage insurance premium. When you're buying an FHA loan, there's two kind of mortgage insurances, the ones you're paying monthly and the upfront one that you have to cover. All in all, this adds up to about 8,052. Two, and that's an important number that we're going to keep in mind. Here we have the 3.25. Now, not every point is equal. There are certain mortgage brokers or lenders that can do more with one point. I don't know how it works on the back end. I'm not a lender, but it's just weird, right? I saw this and it says 3.25 and I said, wow, that's a lot of points. And for a lot of points, I mean, I get it. You're saving a pretty good chunk off the interest rate, but I've seen better. It just seems like something wasn't really jiving there. So the origination fee, which is the fee that the lender is charging, was $2,500. So I was like, okay, really, this could be part of these loan costs here. But anyways, um, we can move on. So here we have more fees. They're not, these are ones you can't really shop around. This is basically just based off what's being charged for your house, like your home insurance premium, your mortgage insurance premium, your property taxes. And then here they're padding those escrow accounts. So when you move in, they're not just going to be at zero balance. Um, the escrow account is what the money that gets put into, like when you're paying your mortgage, it gets put in there. And then when the home insurance premium is due, they take it from there. When taxes are due, they take it from there. These, yes, important, but I mean, really it's depending on the house, right? And some things you can do to save some money here is you can get a better, you know, home insurance because twelve hundred dollars is what they're guessing here. That's excessively high in Phoenix. Sorry to all my Texans and Floridians. Here, this prepaid interest, it really depends when you close on the house. If you close at the beginning of the month, you're, this number is going to be higher. And if you close at the end of the month, this number will be a lot lower. But everything else really depending on the house and the insurance and all that stuff. This is another title owner's policy. This is more really part of the title fees, which once again, have nothing really to do with the lender. So we're not really putting a lot of effort into that. We can look at all this and this is like, like kind of scary to look at, but we're gonna not really focus on that right now. And we're gonna focus instead on this and this. And more importantly, of course, the interest rate. Now, when you're looking at this scenario, you a lot of people just focus on the monthly payment. And I really implore you to explore an amortization calendar or a schedule calculator because 
it's going to really help you break down what you're really paying for. Here I have one just using bank rate. 5.62 is a rate, 410,000 is what they put. So we can really see here over 30 years what you're paying in interest. Now, of course, you might not be planning on having the same loan or same house for 30 years, but worst case scenario, what if you do? And if you think you're, you're saying, oh, Javier, I'm only going to be there 10 years. Well, you can go to 2034 and you can see how much interest you're going to spend. After 10 years, you're going to spend a total of interest of $228,371.37. And your remaining balance is only $331,000. Now let's move on to the lender they ended up working with. Off the bat, you're going to see some huge differences. The loan amount is a lot smaller. So they were able to do some kind of program where they were able to cover some of the down payment. The interest rate is 4.875, which is about seven to eight points difference. And of course, the monthly payment and interest is 2208. Obviously, the interest rate is lower, so the payment goes down a bit. We can see the overall monthly payment is lower because of the combination of the lower interest rate and, of course, the mortgage insurance and the escrow being lower because they're actually using more accurate numbers. So obviously, we see a huge savings not only on the monthly payment, but the interest rate is pretty massive. And here's the thing. You just wouldn't know that you could get that. Right. And, and you would think that they're still using the same amount in points. But let's analyze the actual fees and see what's going on here. We're going to see that the points are significantly cheaper. Only 2.12 points are being used. So the total points needed is only ninety two hundred dollars. Now, the origination fee is a lot higher. So all in all, I mean, you're, they're paying about the same. I would say thirteen thousand so fifteen thousand eight hundred fifty one. So sixteen thousand. So the fees are a little bit higher. The origination fee and the underwriting fee but you know brokers usually that's how they're able to get it done either way as long as this is about similar which it seems like it is here we can see the closing costs or the, the services you can shop for is also a little bit higher the appraisal is lower uh a lot of these junk fees are still there but they actually added like the hoa certification fee that's something that the other one should have added right so they're giving you the impression that it's cheaper but why would they not add it? It's an HOA property and their system hasn't really picked that up yet. Who knows? So we can see the mortgage insurance premium is 7170 here. And we look back here, it's about 7170 Yeah, they're giving you more fees. I would be, be surprised if they end up using all of it. Here, once again, we're not gonna put too much effort into this. This is just the title fees. Um, these fees are technically lower, but this is probably just because they're using more accurate numbers because they work here more in Arizona. Um, so that's the thing about working with a lo local broker, a local lender, is they're going to know these fees a little more accurately. So we're not going to put too much effort in the fact that they did more research and they know the actual fees here. Uh, don't put too much effort in that. Home warranty as well. There it is. All in all, the estimated cash to close is a lot cheaper, 32000 versus 26000 Now, obviously, I can see that, well, closing costs are higher. And the reason why this is lower is because of that lower down payment. So the question I would then ask is I'm going to call the lender and say, what are you doing with the down payment? How are they not paying the three and a half? Is there some kind of program happening here? So I would find out more questions about that. But other than that, this is a like binding document. This is pretty accurate. If anything, it should go lower towards the end. If this ever changes, like you want to keep a copy of this because when you're getting an updated loan estimate or you're at the closing table, you want to really compare this to what you get to make sure that there's nothing fishy going on. And of course, if there is, sound the red flags. So how much money is my client saving over, let's say, 10 years? We can literally just do this uh, a crude way of doing this is just comparing down monthly payments sorry so 2733 of minus 2555 that's about 178 so we can multiply that by 12 and let's say multiply by 10 years so they're saving about twenty one thousand three hundred sixty dollars over 10 years and that doesn't include the initial like six thousand ish that they're saving up front all in all if you're looking at just a like fee you're they're saving about twenty seven thousand dollars over 10 years this is obviously accounting for you never you know pay off the house or you, you don't you don't refinance or anything like that but there's something more here that you need to look and to consider and of course in a market that we're in right now with the market being unsure if it's going up or down it's really helpful to also keep this in mind here if we go back to our original calculator and we go to 4.875 or 4.87, we can really see the amortization of how much money of interest we're saving. With the original loan, we were paying $440,000 of um, interest over 30 years. And after 10 years, you were paying approximately $228,000 of interest and your balance was $331,000. With the new loan, your interest now over 30 years is $370,000. And after 10 years, your interest paid is $195,000 and your remaining balance is $323,000. So here they are next to each other just to kind of see the difference in between them. And the one that really sticks out to me is that remaining balance. 
that's eight thousand, nine thousand dollars, whatever that amount is. If literally, if your house was worth the same exact that you bought it for, which I know is kind of crazy, but let's just imagine, if your house was worth the same exact price you you bought it for, you would make eight thousand dollars more, just off the bat, eight thousand dollars more because you have a less balance. And on top of that, not only are you going to make $8,000 more, but you spent less because your monthly payment has been less and your down payment was less. So overall, it's just a better gain. God forbid you actually stay in it for 30 years and you see the massive differences of the interest rate that you've ended up spending. But these things really matter. So yes, the Rocket Mortgage fanboy was completely destroyed. Rocket Mortgage wasn't able to give him the best deal, but it is what it is. It is part of the business. I'm sure they can use, maybe consider for a refinance in the future. So now let's talk about the strategy that was used to obtain this. This is a business interaction, okay? And you do not get personal. Your lender might be your friend or close friend or family member, whatever it is, or you just might really like them because they're a really good social media influencer or whatever, or maybe you just love their company get personal feelings out of it you're, you're you're basically representing yourself in the best way possible and that is without emotions on the table so first and foremost here's the first tip try not to focus so much on the pre-qualification a lot of people go real ham on it they go really intense they're like Bro, what's the best interest rate you got I me and squeezing every single dollar they can from the people but the reality is the interest rate is changing hourly, even daily. So it really doesn't matter to fight for the best rate when you might not be in a contract until two weeks from now and the rates can drip, like drip, dip lower or go higher. There's just things that you can't control. And as much as we love to control things, the market hasn't still, at least, at least us, at least we can't control the market, right? What you should focus on instead in the beginning is two things. These numbers right here, ones you can shop for, including the origination fee, just to get an idea of what the lender is charging. And you can put these in an Excel sheet, compare them and just really see who's offering the cheapest number essentially. And of course, the vibes. Are they answering their phone call on the weekend? Are they there to answer questions? Do they talk down at you when you're when you're asking questions or are they being very friendly and educational? Those are the things you do. Now, whatever, if, even if you don't find the perfect one, that's fine. You want to select at least three or four of them. A rocket mortgage, a broker, a lender, whatever, whatever you end up picking. Make sure they're variety. Don't just pick like four online lenders. Don't just pick four mortgage bankers. Like have some variety. Once you pick two, three, four of them, do not make a decision that you just let everyone know. Hey, we're going to start looking for houses now. I appreciate everybody. We'll let you know when we find the house. Once you go under contract, send all the lenders the actual executed contract and say, okay, here is the offer. Here's the house that we're buying. Give me your best number. Then they'll be able to provide a lot better interest rate, be able to actually research and find out what the actual closing costs are and really go to ham because here's the thing. They have the opportunity. You're not just some some a prospect who's like getting a prequel. You're you're going to close in the next 30 to 35 days. They're going to step up to the plate. They're going to talk to their managers. They're going to really make sure to get you the best deal. Now, here's the thing. You let everybody know who they're competing against. So when you email them, hey, by the way, I'm also sending my application to these two, three banks. I'm going to choose by the end of the day who join gives you the better deal, but I just thought I'd give you a fair shot. So you're, you're kind, you're courteous, but you're also giving everybody a chance to win your business. At the end, you can really just break down like I did. Like, here's the numbers. Here's the, the what's saving me like long term. What's going to yeah, some of you might offer you like a assistance program, but is it really worth it when you're looking at the interest? You can really break down and find the best situation for you. And once you go with them, then you got yourself the best deal possible. Now, of course, some things to keep in mind, you want to make sure to tell the seller when you're negotiating a contract, we have three or four pre-qualifications. Um, we're going to choose one like within the one or two business days, but just want to let you know, uh, we might switch lenders. It's already been decided or very well qualified, um, but we might be doing that. Now check with your state, that might be an issue, but I think as long as you're upfront with the seller, I think it's okay. And yes, that's a lot of extra effort, but let's just kind of summarize what my client is getting here. My client is saving $21,360 every 10 years just because the monthly payment is cheaper straight up cash, right? But if you multiply that by three, essentially he's saving $64,000 over years. And if you add back the, the $6,000 difference, a monthly payment around there, you're about $70,000 of money saved. Now this is just flat fee. If you're looking at the actual interest, that's a whole nother enchilada. With the 5.625% interest rate, they're paying about $439,000 of interest after 30 years. If we switch that over to the 4.875, they're only paying $370,000. So also saving them an additional like, well, almost $70,000. So all I combine that together, 
that's a whole lot of savings. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you want to join the best community out there for, for real estate, home buyers, doomers, whatever you are, join our Discord. It's in the links below. Um, we also have a lot of exciting things coming up soon. So I would love for you guys to be kind of be involved in the community and be ready for that. I would love a lot of, uh, I need some uh, help with some of my community soon with some projects I'll be releasing. So I'd appreciate that if you go join that. So everyone else, thank you so much for watching. Hit the likes, hit the subscribes, and YouTube thinks you should watch this video next. So go ahead and check it out. I appreciate everybody. You have a good one.